damage left took by Trinidad. Mayorga goes in this gap with, with real, you know, middle of the... After losing the undisputed heavyweight championship to James Douglas on February 11, 1990, Mike Tyson embarked on a comeback in hopes of regaining his title. First, he knocked out 1984 Olympic gold medalist and former amateur opponent Henry Tillman in the first round. Then he destroyed the up-and-coming prospect Alex Stewart. After the fight, the promoter Don King announced Ruddick would indeed be Tyson's next opponent, while also announcing that Tyson and Showtime had agreed to a blockbuster long-term pay-per-view deal that would pay Tyson $120 million. Tyson was the number one contender in the three major championship versions, with Donovan placed right behind him in the rankings. The winner was to face the undisputed champion Evander Holyfeld. The start was taken abruptly, and after the end of the first round, Tyson and Ruddick did not want to stop the exchange. In the second round, Donovan counted out a controversial knockdown. At the end of the third, the situation repeated itself, but now everything was clear. Tyson hit a beautiful left side in response, and Razor danced and ended up on the floor of the ring. Cut this tension with a knife. Both men throwing punches. Any one of which could stop it. Tyson hitting afterwards. All right, okay, slow down. Slow down. Nice, nice rhythm work off the jab. Don't. Round two. It's scheduled for 12. Oh, a heavy right by Tyson, but it was. He's counting and it's going to cost him a 10-8 round, but in truth, that wasn't much of a knockdown. There was a shot though, and he did go down whether he's off balance or not. It's break, legit. Break. It's legitimate. Oh, that's a hit on the break. He can lose it. Steele, though, did not signal that he deducted a post. Steele will have to warn him and then he'll have to decompose because the hurricane is building up. Frustrated in the opening round. Now, he's measuring... <laughs> In the process. And that's what he's got to do. He, he Ruddick just went back. Oh. Now he's trying to get his up. And left by Ruddick and, and Michael Dokes. Well, Dokes is... is... Put, it together. Put your arm back, Razor. You do not want to get in there with Tyson. He's got short, stubby arms. He's just leaning on Tyson. Oh, right by Tyson. Starts to get some offensive action on, on his own. It's just a question of chopping down. Crowd erupting, thinking that. Good, good shots. He just doesn't quite get there. There's a left by Ruddick. A left by Tyson. And that Scheduled for 12. Tyson out to the other end of those fists. Way through the fourth. Tyson looking for that hook. Oh, body shot by Tyson. The crowd groans that body shot punishment. Oh, a big left by Reddick. And a low blow counter by Tyson. off the jab keep to your game plan quit looking for one goddamn punch okay stay on the game plan you're out of your game plan and he's right he went to sleep although he wants to steal one oh great great right hand not a knife the judges have to worry about it. all right up richard Steele, who has refereed 83 title Put fights a former to officiate this one Tyson's promoter Don King. Oh, there's a right one hand. Of the best. I don't think anybody can question his integrity or his honesty. A flurry. 
Tyson with another right. Tyson is patiently just cutting this. He's one. looking for his third straight. Oh, look at this. We are now closing down. As Tyson has virtually gone to sleep. And he is well out in front of his stool, ready to go. The first five rounds were for Iron Mike, but Ruddick was not going to give up. In the sixth, he managed to deliver a lot of accented blows and slightly shake the formidable Mike. In the next three minutes, Tyson shook the Canadian and rushed to finish off. Referee Richard Steele intervened. The stoppage of the fight looked somewhat premature, although there was no doubt about Tyson's dominance. He's been knocked down twice earlier. Well, he's throwing those little, up, little uppercut and then the right hand over there. Oh, nice hook. Here comes Weezer running out of nowhere. A combination by Ruddick. A right by Ruddick. Hard punishment again. A left uppercut by Razor Ruddick. That stunned Tyson. Now Tyson says no. Hit me again. And he did with the right. And the bell sounds. I want you to keep to your game plan. You hear me? I don't want you to get wild. You're looking for one shot. For Ruddick that he's won in this entire fight. Well, let's see what An electrifying round. We headed to number seven. Well, that's it. No blows, but, and it seems to have taken some steam out of Tyson. Ruddick coming back. Now Tyson with a big left. Yeah, but, Ru but Ruddick for withstanding this kind of barrage. Oh, oh what a right by Tyson. Oh, the oh. left. Now the right combination. Steele steps in. Is it over? It's over. It's over. Richard Steele with security. They are protecting Richard Steele, and that is the crowd reaction. And the crowd is all over referee Richard Steele for stopping the fight, and their opinion. On April 7, 2001, one of the biggest and best selling fights in featherweight history took place between Mexican Marco Antonio Barrera and British star undefeated Nassim Hamad. As a result, this fight became best-selling in this weight category, selling 310,000 pay-per-views. The favorite in the fight was Nassim Hamed, 3-1 to one in his favor. For this battle, he earned a huge fee of $8.5 million, Barrera received about $2 million. This was Hamed's fifth fight in the United States. His debut was very impressive. He knocked out Kevin Kelly in the fourth round, but during these rounds, each boxer was on the canvas three times. Hamed's record was 35 victories, of which 31 were by knockout. Barrera had 52 wins and 3 losses. Although both boxers were 27 years old, it was the Mexican who was considered more worn out by tough fights in a long career, which he began at 15 years old. Hamed's coach was the legendary Emmanuel Stewart, which gave him even more advantages. So, most experts didn't give the Mexican a single chance, which was strange, because Barrera was far from a whipping boy. The first round saw the flashy Naz play to the crowd and grimace at Barrera as he head-hunted with his powerful left hand, ready to pounce as soon as Barrera attacked. But it soon became evident Marco was not going to bring the fight to Nassim. Instead, the challenger boxed cautiously, probing with a stiff jab occasionally followed by a straight right and landed some heavy counter left hooks. In the second, Hamed turned up the rough tactics to try and assert himself shoving and grabbing after he missed with his left hand to deny the challenger a chance to counter. Barrera, always the proud warrior, refused to be bullied. With over a minute left in the stanza, Hamed lunged forward and missed with a wild right, only for the Mexican to tackle him to the canvas and pin him there as if saying, enough of that. Inside, Asim's power that Barrera is fighting the way he is. fight is to move to the left, stay away from that left hand. Big left hand by Barrera inside. Every round, Barrera should send him to the corner on the connect with a left jab. 
has with a quick combination there. Lost your championship. Not only so, he made him tuck his head just a little bit by telling him it looks more like he's doing more damage to you. Rather than saying, there you are. But there it is. A little by play on the clinch uh, will tell you that Hamed has found out he's in with a true perfection. Figures to be able to end oh, the fight oh, or oh, begin oh, to oh, end oh. it with a punch. You hold on, hey, let's... Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I got it going back and forth. 57, 57, three rounds apiece. From Marco Antonio Brera... Oh. Harold Letterman has it even. In round six by CompuBox numbers, Hamed... You start fighting. That's what Barrera is doing. He's pacing himself. And Barrera says, come on. Come on. All right, break. Barrera doing clowning with a clown. Big Don't. right hand to the body again by Barrera. Don't shower. He's going to have to climb it, bring it down close to the chin. Now. This jab, throwing it more frequently, landing it more often. That was his... Oh, oh, Boy, he's oh, throwing oh, these oh. in the middle yet, but he's starting to pick up the power. With some royal blood. This is the jab, jab, double jab. Zone to appear to take a lead on the scorecard. Right. Now for the first time you see the Prince getting closer. Thing about Prince, but he doesn't have anything else. He's got stalking and trying to land that left foot. Balance so on top of him. Best punch of the round, right here. Herrera goes under a left. You see the Prince just will not jack. By the middle rounds, both fighters were fully committed to their strategies. Hamed tried again and again to land his power shots, but Barrera's plan to circle away from Hamed's left put him in a great spot to fire his own left hooks, which connected with authority on Hamed's body and head. In the second half of the fight, Barrera pulled ahead on the scorecards, further exposing Hamed's tactical weaknesses and lack of creativity. Hamed versus Barrera was proving to be a one-sided route as Barrera put on a boxing clinic against a dangerous puncher. The Mexican had completely rewritten the script everyone had memorized, turning what was supposed to be Hamed's coronation into a humiliation. But he hasn't thrown anything with it. He's missed it. is countering to get it done here. There's a big left hand. Barrera covering up. Can you believe the odds? Are? The combinations have been thrown by Barrera for Marco Antonio Barrera to try to rise to the top of the featherweight heat. Saw in his last fight and said this is a different fighter. Yes, it is a very tough. Naz has got to try to land a big knockout punch. Even after Naz's aggression to turn it against him. Naz will not come back with any shot that the Prince has developed since he was a boy. There is, George. There is. But not when he's running like short left hand oh, yeah, inside bring on, bring on, by Hamed. You can't back up. You've got to bend down and go to with short. By round 10, Emmanuel Stewart started begging Naz for a knockout. Barrera was just three minutes away from a dominant win. Nevertheless, Hamed came out swinging in the final stanza, searching for the one big shot that could salvage the night and his undefeated record. Hamed's reckless attack did not impress Barrera, however, who decided to put an end to Naz's frenetic swinging by trapping Hamed in an arm lock and pinning him face first into a corner post, like a cop apprehending an insolent hoodlum. Barrera lost a point for that move, but this would prove a mere footnote in what became one of Marco's greatest performances and perhaps his biggest win. All three scorecards declared Barrera the winner and new featherweight champion of the world.
After that punishment, Nassim Hamed didn't activate the rematch clause, had only one fight in London, and retired from boxing. Marco Antonio Barrera. On June 1, 2019, the unbeaten unified heavyweight champion from the UK, Anthony Joshua, was set for his American debut against the fighter from New York, Gerald Miller, at Madison Square Garden. Six weeks before the planned bout, multiple failed drug tests ruled Miller out from fighting and placed the entire event in jeopardy. However, after two weeks of searching, the show was saved when flabby Mexican contender Andy Ruiz was announced as a replacement opponent for AJ. Unlike Miller, Ruiz was very respectful in the build-up, posing for pictures and smiling at everybody. Andy Ruiz was a 25-to-1 shot to dethrone WBO, WBA, IBF, and IBO champ Joshua, but he pulled off what most believed was the impossible. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, with his trainer, Manny Robles. He's wearing white with gold and stands six feet two, 268 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 32 victories, 21 wins by knockout. He has only one defeat and that was a split decision loss from Imperial, California and fighting for his Mexican heritage, Edelos Toros Mexicanos. The former undefeated NABF heavyweight champion, the challenger, Andy Destroyer Ruiz Jr. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Rob McCracken, wearing white with black, standing six feet six and weighing in officially at 247.8 pounds. Since capturing Olympic gold, he now has a perfect professional record. 22 the heavyweight fighting pride of the United Kingdom, the reigning, defending, undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony. Back in December, 1996. Obey my commands. I want you to protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves now, man. You're boxing at the bell. God bless you both. 1983. Joshua started the fight with his lead left hand swinging low by his waist, a risky tactic that Ruiz warned him against with a couple of early digs that had the crowd concerned. The British hero enjoyed his first scoring punches in the last 50 seconds of the second round when he landed twice with a short left hook and a stiff jab. And in round three, he raced through the gears and dropped Ruiz with a murderous uppercut. 
But Ruiz shocked the world seconds later by dropping Joshua in sensational style, and he was saved by the bell moments later when he hit the deck for a second time and took another 8 count. The left hook that AJ is infamously susceptible to clipped his temple first and rendered him senseless. A zombie in her right sent him down. Joshua beat the count but was stumbling around the ring with a vacant grin, all his dreams and hard work hanging by a thread. And Ruiz pounced to batter him to the ground once again, terrifying the one-sided crowd backing their 2012 Olympic icon before the bell saved him. Trainer Rob McCracken had to somehow save his man from one of the biggest embarrassments in sport, and the fourth round looked an improvement when he tagged the challenger. Joshua admitted to hating shorter men because they were able to tuck up and dodge shots, and Ruiz, four inches below him, did exactly that. And in round 7, the walls and Joshua came tumbling down. AJ connected with a sweet left hook, but Ruiz countered and stunned him for a third flooring. The accusations of Joshua being chinny were proven moments later, when Ruiz earned every penny of his 3 million pounds by dropping him for a fourth time and being crowned Mexico's first heavyweight world champion. After Calzaghe's split decision points victory over Bernard Hopkins and Jones's victory over Felix Trinidad, the two signed to fight each other for the Ring Magazine Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. After having been originally scheduled for September 20, 2008, the fight was rescheduled when Calzaghe injured his wrist in training. The bout was then rescheduled for November 8, 2008. Touch him up, the bell rings, come out fighting. I think Jones has a little bit more crack in his shot than Calzaghe's. He thinks safety first oftentimes. 38 knockouts in 52 wins for Jones. However, no knockouts since February of 2002. Far a counter right hand. But he also gives up. Calzaghe lands inside. Yeah. knows that Jones is quicker in the center of the ring and down goes Calzaghe just as he was down. The fight didn't start well for Calzaghe who was knocked down in the first round. 
Replays showed the knockdown was caused by an accidental forearm by Jones. However, he composed himself and went out strong in the third round. In round six, Jones landed a thunderous uppercut that had the crowd on their feet. But in round seven, Kelzagi opened a cut above Jones's left eye. Jones was clearly having difficulty as the blood completely impaired his vision. Jones gets aggressive as he almost needs a KO because of the cut. Roy digs into the body as they wrestle. The grappling continues in the corner and Roy is having trouble with the volume flying at him. Jones backing into the ropes and giving Kalzaki a chance to just go away. Many of the punches blocked. He can't hit you, but don't square up too much over there on his left hand, okay? Good body shot by Kalzaki. Left hand upstairs by Kalzaki. Reason to score for him, Joe Kalzaki does. Kalzaki unfazed. Goes at him with his hands held low. And that's what I'm saying, and I, I don't know if it, he's ever fought anybody like this. That kind of thing is not just, he's a big man. You know, it's a, it's a hand by Jones. Hard body shot before that by Kalzaki. We're burning himself out by throwing so many punches while he's blocking him. Jones is guard out of the way with the right hand there. I don't think either fighter has ever fought anyone with the speed. The to the audience and to the judges that he has weathered the storm. Jones with punch count from here. He has dominated round three. A forearm or a wrist. No part of the glove actually hit him in the face. As we go into the fourth round. But again, he's digging himself out of a hole. Having fallen behind in the first and maybe the second round. And you never know when Jones may lay another trap for him. Question is, just kept building the tempo. And now he's attacking Jones with impunity in the corner. It may not be wise for him, particularly when Joe is standing as he is now with his guard down. And he's not bothered by what happened in round one. And maybe show Roy that he doesn't respect his power. Good straight left hand by Kalzaki, three right hands to but Roy's uh, contact percentage has got to be very low. He's throwing punches, but he cannot hit Kalzaki. There's a hard right hand by Jones. Body shots by Kalzaki. Jones backs away. Begins to try to apply his volume formula to it. Well, I would have to get Roy so far this, this round here, the way it's going. Well, yeah, that's his way of trying to make Kalzaki get tired. Kalzaki lands a big left yeah. hand. Jones is being physically beaten. A tough round. And... Kalzaki tries to nail it down with a flurry at the finish. Jones with one more big count. Jones 18 out of 33. Kalzaki with a 12 nothing edge in jabs. Jones had his moments in that round, but it's... Jones must have made a pretty good point the last round because Kalzaki is suddenly treating him with more respect. He's gotten away with that. He's having problems getting... Getting that punch in with Kalzaki, and that's got him all off track because he's not really jabbing much. He's not, well, that's the main thing he worked on, and I'm quite sure Joe them have studied him very well and, and learned that that's the main punch they have to look at. Him for. Remember, there were opportunities for Roy to win, and he didn't take advantage of them. They used to be, and Joe Kalzaki's coming straight through with that one two. And Good so right, left right, by yeah. Jones, another one. He follows it up with a couple of body shots. He's back against the ropes. Roy may be momentarily hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. Straight left. Blood straight left. above the left eye. But Kalzaki is wearing Jones down with the constant assault. Again, the hand speed flurries as he pushes him into the corner. Jones is landing good, up, solid up. counter shots. And Kalzaki now is walking through them. Yeah. to seem to show a sense of desperation as his feet and hands begin to move faster. Fighting with more will and heart than was the case against Tarver or Glenn Bell. But it's not the same thing as winning the fight, coming back to win. Perhaps, depending on how long he can go with that cut. Kalzaki has taken a little bit of a vacation this round. But now, and when he's able to push Jones into corners, he's totally in control. 
The combinations and the hand speed, and willpower, and desire. Seventh round of the Desert Charles fight. The ref said you have one more round. He knocked Charles out. I just would just be on the defense, especially at this age. You know, I can't take a risk of but He's trying to win this fight. He realizes, yeah. I think, that this is his last chance on this stage. Kalzaki has now landed more punches than anyone has ever landed against him. But I don't think he can do anything about it at this stage. And Roy, who's having to cover up. Jones shaking his head. I have previous appearances in Madison Square Garden. He won them all. Reality started to set in. Nowhere in the world is reality as cruel. One. Roy Jones Jr. uses a physician running away with the fight. You gotta wonder how much longer they're gonna let this go. Because Roy's not gonna beat him. Seven to two, Cal Zag. He told oh. Alton Merkerson between round he would try to land some hooks. His left hook keeps sailing. It's time to work on it. Don't hold yeah, I think so. Thank you. Leading. And Jones is badly compromised in the ring. This started along about the second round when the swelling is not beating Roy in the round, but he's been a competitive fight for Roy and anyone. He goes in and out. He's very, very difficult to beat right there. See, he pulls back, and uh, he'll always be a threat for Roy and anyone. And therein lies the danger of fighting well past yeah, that's for oh, sure, but out. at his best, go, Roy was pretty go. special. No, he was great. If there's any fighter of the last 10 years who's as cocky and super confident as Roy Jones, it's Joe Calzaki. And I'll beat you anyway. Very sporting of him, Jim. Don't hold, let go. I think he's also, frankly, slowed Jones down to the point where basically he feels he's probably extremely comfortable. Also, given that Roy, at his best, was the best fighter to fight in the weight class in which Calzaghe accomplished the most, super middleweight. And Jones is now talking full time. Impossible to tell what he's saying, but he's talking to Calzaghe the whole time. Probably something to the effect of. In the champion's rounds, we saw more dancing than boxing. Kalzagi attacks the body and head effectively. Jabs keep coming at Roy's left eye. Not sure it's smart for Joe to taunt Roy so much, but it's not hurting him. Unless the ringside judges saw a different fight, Jones needs a KO in the last round. He's looking for the home run shot. Kalzagi's not taking risks. He lands the occasional punch. Roy covers and Kalzagi flurries. The crowd tries to spur Jones on. Kalzagi dances and Jones tries to load up the right. Body shots both ways. The judges awarded Kalzagi the UD win by a wide margin, scoring the fight 118 to 109. After this fight, Kalzagi had nothing left to prove in the world of boxing. In the end, Kalzagi chose to retire. He retired undefeated with a record of 46 wins, 32 by knockout. October 2, 2004. World boxing star Felix Trinidad returns to the ring against new rising star Ricardo Mayorga. This fight was organized by the odious promoter Don King, who invited Felix to return from retirement and immediately go after the rather dangerous puncher Mayorga. King planned to make Mayorga the next boxing superstar, and defeating a legend like Felix Trinidad would do just that. Expert opinion on the result of the battle was divided. Some gave Trinidad more chances despite two years out of boxing, but the rest were confident that Mayorga's striking power would be too much for the legend from Puerto Rico. At the pre-fight press conference, Mayorga picked up a poster with Trinidad's face, threw him on the floor and began to trample him, after which he began to insult his wife and remembered how Felix surrendered in a fight with Bernard Hopkins. Interest in the fight increased, and the fight eventually sold 470,000 broadcasts. Trinidad's fee was $10 million. Mayorga received $2.5 million. The first round was the second coming of Hegler Hearns. Mayorga threw dozens of power punches, many of them landing and even pushing Trinidad back. 
Trinidad came back with his own power punches at the end of buckling Mayorga. The second round was more war, Trinidad blasting many more power shots to take the round. The third round was a huge round for Mayorga. He threw many more and landed many more power shots. Trinidad was buckled by a shot on top of the head. His glove touched the canvas and Mayorga got the knockdown for a 10-8 round. Caught Tito clearly on the ear and it knocked him pretty much off balance, but his glove did test the canvas. At the end of that long reach, just like he's doing now, and have it in the center of the ring. Felix is punching. The fourth was another big round for Trinidad as he landed more power. He hurt Mayorga with a liver shot, and Mayorga was very tired. The fifth was a huge round for Tito. This fight was just an all out war. Tito landed over 60% of his power shots and really had Mayorga in trouble at the end. Mayorga cut under the left eye. For the years game. <laughs> Who get to their lesser opponents in a hurry. This, this opponent. Mayorga backing up, taking straight punches. Tripping Mayorga. Huge left hook. A sure sign that he's taking more punishment than he wants. Ten seconds to go in the round. As Trinidad corners his man. And tries to finish. Huge cut under Mayorga's left eye. That was a good, good trade. Yeah, he'll be going soon, though. He's dead tight, Jim. There he is. Left hand. He can't. That body shot got ruined. Mayorga has never been. For the fighter taking the punishment, as long as the fighter is fighting back. As much as any referee <laughs> we've seen. Oh, that was a body shot that hurt him. The sixth round is another big Tito round. Mayorga hit low on the hip and got a few minutes to recover. Mayorga hit Tito with a good body shot at the end and they traded more at the end of the round. The seventh round was more of the same, both guys throwing nothing but power shots and their chins are holding up so far. Another round for Trinidad. The eighth was another slugfest. Mayorga went down from a hard body shot. Mayorga's first time down ever. Mayorga got up. Trinidad went on the attack and knocked down Mayorga with some hard left hands. Mayorga's in real trouble. Trinidad knocks Mayorga down again and ref Steve Smoker stops the fight. Trinidad comes back, Mayorga's on the canvas a second time. 
Never on the canvas before, twice in this round. Now he has to climb back down. I told him his body shot could do it, Jim. No pre knockdown rule in effect. Another savage left hook by Trinidad. Mayorga goes down for the third time, and Steve Smoker is going to stop the fight. Very smart call. When Oleksandr Usyk became the undisputed world champion, he came to England to defend all his belts against the English superstar and also excellent puncher Tony Ballou. Before this fight, Tony defeated David Hay twice and had no intention of boxing again. But the opportunity to become the undisputed world champion brought him back to the ring. At press conferences before the fight, the Englishman behaved imprudently, said that the Ukrainian didn't have a strong blow and promised a knockout. Yusik was calm and said that Tony was just joking. The fight took place in Manchester on November 10, 2018 at a packed Manchester arena. Yusik fought like he was afraid to get countered by Baloo in the first five rounds. Baloo was able to win most of the first five rounds by landing the harder, cleaner landing shots. Even though Yusik was landing more shots in the first five rounds, he wasn't landing enough of them, and Baloo was able to get the better of him with his power shots. Yusik really just finding his feet. Trying to get his own range, Yusik. Nothing landing at all just yet. But that range. I'll bring a lot to him, sit back at range until something happens. If it's not working at range for Tony Baloo, it's time ever that all four belts have been defended or challenged for on these shores. It's a Momentous, and the bookmakers giving Bellew little chance. Most of the trade have predicted Usyk by late starting the build-up. That Usyk's been hurt to the body as an amateur. Listen, Tony Bellew getting close here with that, a looping control to the body and landing. Also with a right hand. There. This is good work from Tony Bellew early on. It's an excellent start, and he wants Tony Bellew, and this is all part of a performance. Bellew, he says, he's going to land his big punches. The power will be the difference. It's a confidence to all this from Bellew's here. Bellew switching to southpaw on the first times I've ever seen that for his long career. There's pressure on those big shoulders. He wants to move up to heavyweight. He wants a shot at Anthony Joshua. That's the dream for the tight team. I was talking earlier and I was saying, you know, don't underestimate Tony Bellew's boxing ability. Southpaw jab and putting pressure on Tony Bellew here. He knows he's got to start to get to work and start to land some shots. So Bellew will be waiting with that right. All stars lose the tricks at the 12 round distance. Usyk unbeaten, but he's the his best mate, Vassal Lomachenko, what Alexander Usyk to show what he really can do. Starting to his right hands. At the moment, and he's avoiding the big left of the south down here in Manchester against Tony Pelley, who's got the backing of the crowd. This is on no territory. Another great round. Johnson using using is supposed to be this supreme boxer in the fourth round, and he still hasn't created much. Deep breath. Derek Chisora is a big mate of Tony Pelley's. Here's the liver paddling and out boxing. Pelley takes it. Well, if Pelley switches off against somebody. That use it was very quick. Give Vladimir Klitschko loads of trouble in sparring a few years ago. 
And this is better for the Ukrainian as he's that right hand, and that's what he's looking for. That oh, right hand right there. Big shot from Tony Bellew. Usyk. Look at Usyk, and he's back in some serious trouble. Usyk trying to dig the punches in. Left hand gets through. Landed then as Usyk backs him up. Did they affect him? Is he if Tony Bellew lands big shots like that and, and doesn't have much of an effect and starts to feel the pace as it goes on then, it's bad news. Some of his power in that round, he had moments of success, but Bellew landed some good power shots for me and he was, he was enjoying himself. Alexander Usyk writes poetry, loves solving puzzles. Let's come into this. And, and look at the performance we're getting. But Usyk now is having to force this and try and get... like Joe Joyce. A machine, so many calling him Usyk. Looking for a lovely quick counter. That's the danger. If Usyk finds a home for that jab, he'll be able to work with combinations off that jab. Tony Bennett does not want to sit there last time. He's got a grip down on his gun shield there. Alexander Usyk. It's the fighting man from Liverpool against the tonight. Promise. The ultimate challenge in what he promises is his last battle. 13 weeks off to Tony Bellew, without any question, really. I scored it exactly the same as you, Carl. I definitely think those the first and the fifth round of the two... Tommy two have got it 3-2 to Bellew. So close. Oh, it's been anything but. Tony Bellew has not let him get set. Settled. Nice work from Bellew. Bellew when he's waiting for you with that big right hand and left hook. And he's teased us all week, hasn't he? Not telling us his tactics. Say, I'll just go and knock him. He's got the tactics right against David Hay a couple of times. Against McCarvey, it was more, you know, the thrill of the battle. But the way this is going, if this carries on, you expect it to start to turn towards Usyk because Bellew using a lot of energy. He's thinking a lot and he's looking. Alexander loaded. Usyk, very tight online. A lot of people having their opinions. Very subjective, of course. It, it, it is very close. I've got Bellew ahead because round two, three, and four was good, but. Good right hand counter there from Tony Bellew, and that's the danger for Usyk if he sits there. And Usyk looks comfortable. Oh, oh, and his shot yeah, and buckled in the leg for Usyk a couple of times. Switch back on, right? IBF, WBO, 14 stone four, cruiserweight belt. Bellew slugged his way out of a corner in the seventh and caught the champ with two flush shots. But instead of wincing, he grinned and had the audacity to request more of the same. Usyk got him back to that corner moments later just before the bell and unloaded again. He was enjoying growing success but did not look in possession of the power to stop the Rocky Star. Baloo was warned with a left hook at the start of the eighth but did not learn his lesson. Another sensational shot sent him to the ground and he was never going to beat the count. 11 knockouts on the slate for Usyk in those 15 wins. And counted and landed on Usyk as he was punching. Another right hand from Bellew, but it's single shots. As we saw against David, and now he's going for it. Tries to turn it into a dogfight, but of those. First, he's got to take care of Tony Bellew, but it's looking brighter for the Ukrainian, much brighter. The size of him, it's, it's a difficult ask, and, you know, the longer this draws on, the worse it gets for him, but he did the right thing at the end of that last round because he tried to make it a dogfight. language, and it's the physical manoeuvring around the wing. Ring of Usyk now. Bellew back to two and stayed on the legs, Tony Bellew, looking like he's wearing down, and these jabs and left crosses now, like that one, to send the blood splatter. Still gallant and still brave, but Usyk is really closing this gap with, with real, you know, minimum effort. Oh, 